Hi, this is Cypher with another video for my N-Gage model railway layout. Today I'm going to be looking at how I'm going to be operating my points. Now I'm not the greatest solder in the world, so I'm going for um, as much solderless kit as I can. Um, so what we've got here is a PL10 motor, which is mounted underneath the board, with a PL50 and a PL26 switch unit. This is the PL50 and then the PL26 switch inside it. And underneath the um, motor, I've got a PL15 twin micro switch. Now this video is slightly backwards because I'm going to start with the working model and then I'll start to take it apart. But this is a little test bed that I've put together just to see how things work. Um, the main reason why I've gone this route is I started looking at the seat motor and um, decided when I had some really good advice from the guys at Pico that Pico was the route I wanted to go even though it's more expensive and um, following my problems that I had with the Cobalt CDU2 unit that I couldn't get to throw the uh, motor with the switches um, I've introduced one of my old um, controllers transformers from an old layout um, just for this so I haven't got a CDU in the circuit at the moment um, this is a, a fairly crude test um, but what I will do is once this is all wired up properly on the layout I'll do another video showing all of the wiring and the CDU and, and everything so basically what we've got is um, I've got our switch and our points and I've got a, a couple of LEDs to show which way the point is actually being thrown uh, the frog at the moment is not wired up but it will be when we go live there's no CDU so I've got a bit of a buzz when I throw the switch but at the moment the LED is showing that the train would run through the point going straight on so if we turn the power on and then we throw the switch then you can now see that the point was thrown and the, in the LED is now indicating the other route through the uh, through the point so switch it back and you see immediately the LED flicks over and that's all done with the micro switch underneath the point and we'll have a look at that now actually before we pull the switch apart we'll just take a quick look at the wiring uh, very simple from the back of my transformer we've got a uh, two wires a yellow and a blue which goes into the back of the switch block We've got the switch in the switch block, this is all Pico. And then we've got a black, green and red wire, which is just a, a push in. You push this little green button down, push the wires in, so there's no soldering needed. And then those wires run around to the point motor, which is underneath the baseboard here. So we've got green on one side with it just looping over, and then the black and the red on the other side of the motor. And then this black area here is the PL15 micro switch. Um, I haven't wired the frog side switch at the moment. I will do that when we put this on the, the live um, board. And I've got three wires. Okay, they're all yellow, which isn't great, which then goes into the terminal block. And then from the terminal block, I've got one wire which goes to a battery, very crude, love the blue tack, like I said, don't like soldering. So one wire goes to the battery, and that is from the switch, so it's going to be the middle one. And then the two LEDs are wired in as well, with one the um, live from the LEDs going into the live, which runs to the battery. That's basically all of the wiring to um, make all of this work. Um, there will be three more wires coming off of this side of the switch. There's two, two um, switches underneath the PL15. Uh, one wire will go to the frog of the point. One wire will go to one of the rails and another wire will go to one of the other rails. Um, so that will make sure that the frog polarity is switched accordingly. So that's basically the wiring, really nice and easy. Two wires from the transformer into the switch unit, three wires from the switch 
over to the point motor and I'm using um, Pico wiring harness keeping it nice and easy I then got three wires into a uh, like a block connector to the two LEDs and obviously then the switch will switch the LED accordingly and a power supply for the LEDs okay so I've removed the point motor from the baseboard Move the baseboard out of the way over there, and we can see this uh, set up a little bit better. So, remember, coming from this little switch module, we've got red wire and the black wire onto the switch, and then on the other side, we've got a green wire which is then looped across onto the other two terminals. So, all really nice and easy. Then, on top of the PL10 point motor. We've got the PL15 micro switch, and now you can see the two switches. And um, this just basically sits on, you need to, to glue it on. But what I'll do is I'll just take this apart. So this is the point motor with the extended arm, and a little bush in here which sits in between the switches. You then get the PL15, which gives you your mounting plate and um, these little switches that you just screw in and the most difficult thing is screwing them in and getting it so that the um, as the, the rod moves across from the point motor it makes these connections I don't know if you can see in here as the rod moves over it flicks the switch if you just watch very carefully that little bit of metal in there you'll see that it flicks across the bottom one and the top one and then the other way, the top one, and then the bottom one. And remember, one of these is driving the LEDs, and the other one is going to be dri driving the frog polarity on my points. Um, it could be running other accessories, you know, whatever you want to. So let me just put that back together again. little bit fiddly um, once you've actually got it together like this uh, obviously what you need to do is to glue the uh, black plastic plate to the motor so that it doesn't come apart but you'll see now that this bush comes through just get some focus you see the bush comes through and it sits in the gap there and then as the point motor switches do it from underneath you'll see that it's actually switching the two micro switches see how close I can get while keeping it in focus you'll see the two micro switches changing it's easier to see on the top one so you can see a little bit of black you can just see how that is switching the LEDs it's very simple because the uh, power comes into the middle one and then the two outside ones go to the LEDs so if you're switching to this one get like one LED up switch to the other one the other LED and the polarity changer on the frog is going to work in exactly the same way so a really nice little unit a um, bit more expensive a bit more complicated than the seat motors uh, but for the advice that I got from Pico um, and the simplicity uh, it really was worth the money now one of the things that I did before I did anything else is I contacted the suppliers of SEEP for some technical advice and I also sent a letter to Pico for some technical advice and what I got back from Pico was absolutely fantastic uh, so much so that I sent a letter to them with my wiring diagram for the track and the wiring diagram for the PL15 and PL13 point motors and uh, they gave me a call and um, quite a lengthy discussion 
on on that um, so what we'll do just to finish up this video is I'll pull up the word document on my laptop and we'll just have a quick look at what I sent to them and um, what was said right so uh, this is just a, a letter that I, I sent to PINCO to the technical department I won't kind of go through the actual letter itself um, and I'll include the address in the uh, in the videos and annotation but um, this is the attachments that I included so one was the track plan with all of the individual parts I then also included the panel plan so they could see what was what and then I also included um, where I was going to have the break in the baseboard, my power feeds, my LEDs um, and the insulating rail joiners and they went through all of this with me, the guy actually phoned me back They um, it's more complicated, they'll um, send you it uh, back through the post but uh, we had a, a brief discussion on the phone um, he explained that I've probably got more feeds than I really need but for a DCC layout, um, what I was doing was absolutely fine. And because it's quite small, he actually confirmed that this was uh, a relatively good plan. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and then because I couldn't decide whether I was going to go with the PL13 polarity switch with the PL10 point motors um, or the PL15 that I decided to go with, I actually sent two wiring diagrams, which he's confirmed to be correct. So uh, the Cobalt CDU2 has been ditched, so I've got a mains transformer which is going to be going into um, a CDU um, when I get one. Uh, that will then be wired to the on-off-on switch, obviously the, the positive, and that switch then runs around to the point motor and on the negative side of the circuit so this is going to be the, the green wires in the earlier video um, we go to the other side of the switch mounted onto the PL10 we've got the PL13 which has three connectors on it one goes to the negative of the track one to the positive and then the other straight through to the frog and basically as the point motor changes it will pick up the feed through the switch and adjust the frog polarity accordingly getting a little bit more complicated this is the PL15 switch motor so again uh, drop the cobalt CDU2 so we're going to be going through a standard CDU from the mains uh, the live plus side into the on off on switch which is going to be my PL26 switch which is going to be wired with a red and a black wire around to the point motor and the green common to the other side of the point motor and then this side is where the PL15 switch comes in you remember all of those little micro switches so on one side I've got my LEDs with 12 volt DC power supply so the negative straight into the central uh, terminal and negative out from the left and right terminal on that switch which will then go to the positive and negative of the LEDs and that does the, the switching as you saw and then for the frog polarity uh, very easy the central one goes to the frog okay this should be um, wired across to the actual frog but the central connector across to the frog with the left or the right, I don't think it matters too much, but um, the left one to the live side of the rail and the right one to the minus side of the rail. So um, this basically is the wiring diagram for the PL10 motor with the PL15 switch that I will be using on my layout. Uh, now obviously I will do another video on this once I've actually got everything wired up on the layout so you can see exactly the way it's going to work with the correct coloured wires and the frog polarity switch. So watch out for that video coming soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.